we're going to do is we're going to talk about asses and bases, and then we're going to try to get into equilibrium. All right, now hmm. these next three weeks are, some people consider it the hardest part of the course. It's just, it's, it's not going to be that bad if you, if you, if you start early on it, because it's all based on the same central principle. They're all variations of the same types of problems. Russell's explanations show that he has a tutorial plan in mind and is now letting his students know what to expect from the course in the next three weeks and in the rest of the term. And that's the type of problems we're going to be dealing with. All right, but first of all, we're going to start off with acids and bases. Um, so what's the definition of an acid? What is this tutorial plan and how did he arrive at it? The tutorial plan is a flexible outline of work to be done during the term as well as in each session. It can be in written or verbal form. When applied, it can help students to better understand the material and tutors to pace the sessions throughout the term. Finally, by identifying potential problem areas, tutors can help students through the rough spots in the course. Now let's take a look at how some tutors have prepared their tutorial plans. Some review the course syllabus, notes, and text, and also draw from their own past experiences in the same class, as well as from their past tutoring to create a plan of action. It comes from experience, I guess, from, from, from tutoring your class before. I know what areas they need to work on. So I just kind of broken it down into this main type of problem and this main type of problem, and I could extrapolate from this just one problem various things that they have to know. Basically, I base it on, on the syllabus. In other words, uh, I've had the course before, so I know what they have to know. And I've, you know, I've tutored it before, I've seen the midterms. And so uh, it's, it's from the syllabus and from experience where I find out how to be, what, to, what to base my plan on. Keeping up to date with what's covered in class helps the tutor direct the sessions. Attending lectures is one way of keeping current. So I learn from the students, and I learn while I prepare for the students. Because I do read each week on the subject, and I do attend at least one of their lectures a week, and I do um, uh, get copies of the worksheets that they're given and work out the problems beforehand. It's also important to gauge the students' skill levels to plan what work needs to be done. Your questions can give you information on the students' learning skills, note-taking skills, major field of study, expectation regarding grades, and their study environment. Elisa's simple questions yield much information. Are you freshman, sophomore, senior? senior? Oh, how oh, great. <laughs> you graduating this course? That's super. And what's your major? Uh, Psychobio. Wow. Well, great. And you're taking this as a, a breadth requirement, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you take it because you thought it was going to be easy or something? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be. We are going to be talking a lot about sort of themes and how you write an essay. And we'll be doing some workshops on essay writing. Good. Yeah. OK. From that, I take it you haven't had much English, right? Uh, not here also. also. I had to get my junior college. You had English 3? Right. Right. Okay. English 3 and 4. Meeting and establishing an ongoing dialogue with the professor can help you understand the course emphasis and schedule. I went and talked to um, the professor a couple times last week, and she's, she's a really nice lady, but um, this is really like a literature course for her. It's not just, you know, oh, let's re read a lot of fairy tales and have fun. I mean, she wants to have fun, too, but she is teaching it very much like a real English literature course where you really have to understand the history of the literature. and. Um, motivation of the authors and themes and you know. Is that what the our papers trip. are going to be on? Um, I don't believe there's a paper. There's just well, I mean, our, the final. our midterms are going to be on right. the contrasting those things. So. Right. There's there's going to be essay questions, and I don't know if she's mentioned this in class yet, but she mentioned to me that she's thinking about handing out the questions in advance. Oh, yeah. uh, that'd be nice. She's thinking about it. Um, I don't know yet whether she'll decide that or not. And in any case, I'm going to be seeing her every week, so I'll know what themes she's talking about. And I'll be coming back here and we'll be talking about, oh yeah, this, this thing and that thing. But what she told me that I think is really nice is she wants it to be your own readings of the book. Sure, she wants you interpretations of right. the story. She wants you to pay attention to what she's saying about the themes, but she wants you to read it you know, with your own interpretation and, you, and what you bring to the book, you know.
Even the best of plans are no good if they aren't put into practice. You can use a variety of ways to implement your tutorial plans, but the most important consideration is to remain flexible and open to students' needs and avoid imposing an arbitrary structure on the sessions. Based on that preparation, I, I plan to the extent that I have general subject categories that I know they are going to be held responsible for. Uh, within the context of those categories, um, I ask a few leading questions to see how secure the students feel in those categories of information. And I really, at that point, don't do any more planning. I sort of do each, um, each group or each student, I work them on an individual basis because if I work up a format as if I were teaching the class, I will have the tendency to do this, just that. I will sit down and I will start lecturing from an outline. And uh, that's not really what they need. They get the lecturing at least two different occasions from the TAs and from the professors. Uh, when I first started tutoring, I, had, I, I would go into a session with this you know, fixed idea of exactly what I wanted to cover. And I would cover it regardless of whether the students were ready for it or not. And both of us would walk out of there, you know, I'd see these blank looks in their faces, and they'd say, oh, well, Four, two, two. I don't know what he talked about. And, and I'd walk out of there and say, well, two, I know they didn't understand what I said, but I covered everything yes. I wanted to. Well, that, that's, that's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to get um, some understanding. And so if they're a little bit behind where you're supposed to be, well, then that's, that's not that big of a deal. You can be flexible for that. Finally, it's important to remember that the primary goal of tutoring is to help students become motivated and self-sufficient so that they can design their own plans. Russell understands the need to increase the student's motivation by building on their own knowledge. Using the Socratic method, he helps lead the student to answer her own question and genuinely understand the material. Okay, just that one's kind of... It's kind of tricky. Should I just forget about that one? So what about this one? Which one? The, the B. Okay, so according, okay, according to what I just said, how do you do that now? I mean, what, what I, that's, we know that, okay, we can look at that and see that we've got sodium acid uh, arsenate. Mm -hmm. So you notice this, that's the salt of the conjugate base. Do we break it up like that? Okay, that's 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 what happens, but that doesn't that that's not going to help you solve the problem. Oh, okay. pH. So I have to find the OH concentration. Um. Yeah, you'd find the OH concentration. So you know you you want to be able to approach these problems systematically because. You know, almost every problem you're going to be doing from here on out is going to be solved the same way. Okay, so what's the first thing you need? Equation. Okay, you need an equation. So what kind of equation are we going to use for hydrolysis problem? Oh, this is hydrolysis? That's hydrolysis. Oh. That's what it looks like. I mean, it doesn't look... Doesn't, doesn't it look, looks like I should be able to solve it, but... You, sh you can. You should be able to solve it. It's not, uh, once you understand this, once you understand this part, I mean, how, they, how you get from here to there, it's just another equilibrium problem. It's set up the same way. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Motivated students okay, tend so to become self-sufficient and can create and modify their own study plan. In this tape, we've discussed three main points about the tutorial plan. First, the tutorial plan is an outline of work to be done during the term. It can be in written or verbal form. When used, it can help students understand the course material and help tutors pace their sessions. By taking note of problem areas, the tutorial plan can help students over the rough spots. Second, we noted a number of ways that experienced tutors had designed their tutorial plans. By reviewing the course content and syllabus, by drawing from personal experience with the same course and past tutorials, by attending lectures, by gauging the students' basic skills, and finally, by meeting with the professors, are tutors able to draw up a plan to guide students over the course of the term. 
Third, in implementing the tutorial plan, it is essential to remain flexible to student needs and capabilities and avoid imposing an arbitrary structure on the session. And finally, motivating students and promoting self-sufficiency will lead them to become the designers of their own study plans.